welcome back welcome back to hip health insurance personalized this is consumers doctor on the behalf of foremost organization the health insurance and health care ultimately boils down to the affordability affordability to all Americans, irrespective of their economic status. Foremost organization strives to see everybody should have an affordable health care premium, health care access, and health care quality, health care, and a choice. It's very important choice. We need to have a freedom in healthcare. The main issue today we're going to talk about is affordability. Secrets of health insurance affordability, folks. Secrets of health insurance affordability. So I'll go one by one. I'll go one by one because if you really look at the roughly around 18 secrets, folks, 18. So let's go one by one. Secret number one, secret number one, insurance, generally the insurance is based on a concept of risk pooling. There's no doubt we have to have insurance, folks. We have to have insurance is the way to go. But how we do it, that's what it is. So in basic concept of insurance is risk pooling. That is sharing a potential medical cost with a large group of individuals with a similar health status or health risk. It's very important with a similar health status and health risk. Number two, there were about 28 million uninsured in 2019 without health insurance, without health insurance. Most, most are working for small employers. Most of them want to offer, employers want to offer affordable health insurance to their employees and families. Small mom and pop businesses, they want to offer health insurance to their employees, but it has to be affordable. For employers, it has to be affordable. Number three, so far, we have not seen politicians focusing on small employers, small businesses. We have not seen them focus on small businesses for their health insurance needs. The larger employer groups are taken care of under the federal employer subsidized, self-insured, for the small businesses we have never focused how to how to provide the insurance. So we need to focus on smaller businesses and smaller employees. How the employers, you need to incentivize the employers so they can provide health insurance to all their employees, especially recently with the COVID hit and small business has really taken a big hit. So we need to provide the tools and have to have affordable health insurance premiums. And number four, segmenting individuals by health status or health risk is the key, is the key to affordable health insurance folks. Segmenting into four categories like well category, at risk category, chronic illness category and catastrophic. Those four categories, we need to segment the folks 
so the employer, small business employers, can afford to provide the insurance for their employees. This is a simple and obvious concept is missing in most of the health form proposals. In most of our proposals, it is missing, risking. Risks have to be segmented. It's very important for the smaller employers to have an affordable premium. Number five, vast majority of the population, vast majority of the population would enjoy lower premiums. They would enjoy lower. But if a high risks were segmented into separate pools, providing proper care and treatment for their health circumstances, some given state and federal premium subsidies, especially if a one family member is impaired physically, impaired and they need they 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 just can't their family premium goes up because one family member is impaired so we need to segment those folks so in that way the rest of the family and the employers premiums should not be affected so they need to be segmented folks The high-risk member in a family should be segmented so that the rest of the family premium should not be affected. And number six, health insurance laws and regulations are mostly, are mostly written by insurance industry lobbyists and lawyers. When are we coming to, when are we going to, we need to be aware of that fact most of these laws and were written by insurance lobbyists and lawyers. When are we going to address the consumers? When are we going to bring the consumers into the picture and focus on the consumers? So the laws have to be written for the consumers. Consumers have been ignored in the legislative, legislative process for too long. All these laws in related to healthcare are written by the insurance lobbyists and lawyers, but consumers were never, never focused on in the legislative. So consumers need to be brought up front and we need to write the laws for the consumer. It's very important. We have to write the laws for the consumers, folks. The insurance has to be catered towards the consumers. I hope I'm making it a point. Number seven, lobbies and vested interests would like to pre preserve the status quo. Yes, they're against the interest in choices, treatment options, and affordable insurance. When are we going to realize that? Always the special interest groups, especially from the insurance lobbies, they want to preserve the status quo. We need to bring the consumers to the upfront. We need to focus for the consumer's choices, treatment options, and affordable insurance, not the insurer's interest. We need to preserve the consumer's interest, folks. And number eight, 90% of the hospitals don't know their costs to provide this. 90% of the hospitals don't know their costs. Healthcare costs are a classic example of collusion and price fixing by industry insiders and government complicity on that aspect, folks government complicity on that as when are we going to when are we going to wake up when are we going to wake up bring the consumers and we need to focus the cost based on the consumers demand yes and number nine 
Number nine. Every time I hear about these comprehensive solutions, it's a typical for every industry lobbyist. Comprehensive solutions to delay, deny, and defeat consumer-oriented, patient-centric healthcare reform solutions. Yes, they always mention comprehensive solutions. Basically, they, they use that word to delay and deny and defeat that consumer-oriented, patient-centric options. Number 10, segmenting the uninsurable individuals with impaired health conditions can lower the premiums for individual policies and small groups by 15 to 20%, folks, 15 to 20%. No questions asked, just by segmentation alone. We need to wake up. We need to wake up segmenting the uninsurable folks, especially with impaired health conditions. We we'll lower the premiums for entire population. We need to wake up on that. We need to segment it, folks. Number 11, segmenting by similar health status or health risk will allow for a personalized care, allow for a personalized care, treatment options, information support that will lower, that will lower unnecessary uses of medical services, will reduce the premiums. Like I'm telling you, most of the providers are practicing defensive medicine. We need to have a thought reform for the providers. Thought reform, limit the liabilities for the hospitals and doctors. And by segmenting similar health status, will provide a personalized care and treatment option, folks. And will also lower the unnecessary use of, unnecessary use of because consumers are in charge. They want to make sure, you know, if they really need the service and they can make the right choice for their own health. Number 12. Health insurance is one way to finance the healthcare services, folks. Only That's only one way. But there are other options we are not looking into are like health savings health savings accounts, health reimbursement accounts, and earned health insurance rewards like incentivizing incentives and rewards to lower the premiums. So consumers need to be incentivized so that they can lower their premiums by giving them the options through personal care accounts like health savings accounts. And number 13, similar group risk can affect lower premiums. With reduced overall use, reduced overall use of the medical services, individuals with account-based plans can share lower medical costs with rewards and incentives, folks, with rewards and incentives. Number 13, health insurance account-based plans like HSAs, HRAs, FSAs can be used as a tax-advantaged accumulation of funds to pay for cost-sharing features of insurance. Cost-sharing features of insurance like deductibles, co-pays, they can be paid through this account-based plans like HSAs, HRAs, and FSAs. So the consumers can pay through their accounts. So that's what we need. And number 14, health insurance rewards of 30% or more of premiums can be earned just by compliance 
with insurance program incentives, folks. With insurance program incentives, yes. And number 15, number 15, concept of health review authority empowers the consumer, levels the playing field with insurers, and guarantees everyone access to insurance irrespective of their economic status, irrespective of their physical status, irrespective of class or creed. Yes. Health Review Authority is a public-private partnership, folks, that is not going to strain the government. That is the way to go, man. That's the way to go. I'm telling you. Health Review Authority, under the public-private partnership, will enforce consumer-driven health care and patient-centric health care, folks. Number 16, certificate of guaranteed coverage. Certificate of guaranteed coverage is a hassle-free public-private market-based protection for any pre-existing condition, folks. Any pre-existing conditions, yes. And number 17, concept of subsidized Impaired health support plans. Impaired health support plan. This is where my focus is. My focus as a consumer's doctor. Impaired health support plans assures affordable health insurance for all. For all. And it focuses on the sickest of the sick. This is where my focus is. On the behalf of folks. We need to focus on these Folks, that's our main focus. This is where we need to provide them impaired health support plans. And number 18, personalized health insurance, so-called HIP, health insurance personalized, adopt to all these features, folks, all these features, solves the concerns raised and creates affordable health insurance for all at significantly less cost than Obamacare. Yes, it's significantly less cost than Obamacare and it is, doesn't strain the government. It doesn't cost, it doesn't strain the government, folks. That is the best option we have. I hope I'm making it a point is health insurance personalized, which is HIP, is the way to go. That's the only choice we have to cut down the cost of the health care. And you know what? If we cut down the cost of the health care, overall cost of the health care, we don't need to spend right now, every year, they've been spending over $3.7 trillion dollars that will go down dramatically. And who is going to drive the cost down? The consumer. Consumers will drive the cost down. So that way we have a freedom in healthcare for all, for all. That's the beauty about personalized healthcare, folks. Thank you for listening. If you do like it, subscribe, share, and we will see you in the next episode. Before I forget, hit that notification button so he can he can also share this channel and podcast. Goodbye. Salute.